Hello, and welcome to another how-to video from Trend Micro Tipping Point. Today I'd like to cover a very special set of reconnaissance filters found within our digital vaccine package. They're called scan sweep filters, and we'll be talking about what they are and how they're used on your Tipping Point IPS TPS devices. The name scan sweep is shorthand for port scan and host sweep filters, and they block port scans and host sweeps accordingly. A host sweep is also called a horizontal sweep, which is traffic sent to the same port on many different systems to determine which IP addresses respond. This gives the attacker a list of systems that might be vulnerable. Once this list is put together, the attacker will then typically perform a port scan on each one of those systems. Port scans are vertical scans, or a probe of each and every port on a single system to determine which ports respond. The information returned from that port not only includes connectivity, but could potentially include things like what operating system is running and what the version of that operating system is, which allows the attacker to craft a specific kind of exploit for that system. Now, traffic like this can obviously be malicious, but it can also be perfectly legitimate. DNS, email, and proxy servers, for example, can send out traffic on the same port to multiple IPs which could be misinterpreted as a host scan, so it's not a good idea to block all traffic that meets these filters criteria. Any filter against a true scan or sweep attack needs to be a bit more discerning than that. So we've taken the extra step of designing them to be algorithmic rather than linear. Well, what does that mean? What it means is the filter first tracks the number of port scan and host sweep attempts from a single source IP address and only takes action once that number reaches a threshold that your network team deems to be hostile. Once the threshold is broken, the filter applies a quarantine to the entire offending host rather than any single stream of traffic. This prevents that IP from continuing its malicious scans for a preset amount of time. It goes without saying then that you should consider putting in exceptions to these filters for things like DNS servers, mail servers, and proxies, just in case. Accidentally putting infrastructure like that into quarantine would set you up for a pretty bad day. If you're not sure what devices you have in your infrastructure that might be mistakenly quarantined, we recommend you use a permit plus notify action set during testing to identify those critical systems and then put in an exception. I'll walk you through how to do all these things in our demo, which will be running on an SMS and 8400TX, both running 5.4 code. To get started, let's have a look at the filters themselves. From your SMS client, click the Profiles button along the top, then expand the Profiles section on the left-hand pane. Do the same for Inspection Profiles, then pick the profile you want to edit. We'll be using the default profile for this demonstration, but best practice is not to change that one in case you need it later. Expand the profile and click on Search. From here, we'll go to the Filter Category listing and click the Reconnaissance box then hit search again. We're looking for filters starting at the number 7000, which is TCP port scan. Beneath it, you'll see several others that cover TCP, UDP, and ICMP port scans and host sweeps, ending with filter 7016, ICMP v6 host sweep. The options on all of these filters are the same, so we'll just double click on filter 7000 to give you a glimpse at the configuration screen. First thing I'd like to highlight is that you can click on the words Filter Details on the left-hand side of this window to see a detailed filter description. This is useful, as sometimes people can get scan sweep filters confused with one another. Going back to the Settings screen, you may choose to enable the filter by clicking the Use Filter Specific Settings radio button, then choosing a corresponding action set. For these particular filters, the block action is actually a quarantine by design. So the best long-term setting here will be block plus notify, which will report just how often you're being scanned. Also in the drop-down, you can see permit plus notify, which as you may recall, should be used in the initial filter deployment for testing. If any of your critical resources happen to transmit traffic in a pattern that results in a quarantine, you'll be able to see them in the event log and create an exception for them before it causes a problem. Once you've determined all possible exceptions to this filter, put it into Block Notify instead. Don't forget, distribute the profile to your devices once changes are made or they won't take effect. While we're on the subject, let's have a look at the Exceptions section at the bottom of your screen. Clicking Add will allow you to place an entry in the table for any device you don't wish to be quarantined. 
Notice that the only available field is the source field, as exceptions for destinations, i.e. the targets of scan sweeps, wouldn't solve the problem and would lock down your own servers and workstations. We'll just enter a DNS server entry here for demonstration purposes and click OK, which means that any port scans or host sweep-like traffic from this DNS server will be allowed to pass. Last but not least is the trigger criteria section. The first field determines how many times a host or port is allowed to be touched from a single host before you think it's no longer friendly communication. The second field sets a sliding window for that threshold. So the default settings on this filter are essentially saying if an IP address scans over 100 ports within 5 minutes, quarantine it. These settings can be changed to suit whatever scenario you may have in your environment. The next question you might have then is how long will that IP address be quarantined? The answer is it will be quarantined according to the settings you have in place on your device with a default of 10 minutes. Let's have a look at that setting and how to change it. We'll hit cancel here and click on the devices tab up top. Right click on the device of your choice and choose edit then device configuration. When the menu pops up you'll choose TSC settings which stands for Threat Suppression Engine. Here you can see a setting for quarantine with the default setting shown. You can change how long quarantines last here, but notice you can also uncheck the automatically release addresses after specified timeout box. If you do, it means that once an address is quarantined, it stays quarantined until manually released. Use this option with caution. How do you release said quarantines? Glad you asked. Hit cancel and browse to the same device in the left-hand pane, expand it, then click on Events. You'll see tabs for all of the blocked, rate-limited, trusted, and quarantined hosts on the device. Click on the, you guessed it, Quarantine Hosts tab to get a list of every IP currently quarantined. Search for and select the IP you want to set free, then click the Unquarantine button to the bottom right, or clear the whole list by hitting Unquarantine All. And that's pretty much it as far as configuration goes. You can see the events logged by these filters by going to the Events tab at the top of the screen, expanding Inspection Events, and then choosing Quarantine Events. Filter for the time frame you're looking for, and they'll appear. So, a couple things to know about how these events will appear in your event viewer. On legacy platforms like our N and NX class devices, we don't have the capability of reporting the destination address that's being attacked and that field is populated with 0.0.0.0. .0. Our latest line of TPS and TX devices now include that information, as you can see in the screenshot below. Universal among all our devices, however, is the fact that we don't list the port on port scans. A single port scan, say with a threshold of 100, could very well scan 100 completely different port numbers, and reporting them all would make the event viewer messy and difficult to read. So since the number of attacks and the IP address of the source and victim are the really important information here, the port field will simply display a zero. Notice in the screenshot that the events for this host sweep are being displayed under inspection events rather than quarantined events. This is because there's no quarantine being applied. The action is permit plus notify. Also because of this permit, you'll see multiple sequential events that appear identical because over a thousand sweeps have been sent each 100 of which are being reported. If block plus notify were the action set in this situation, you'd only see one event, and the source IP would now be quarantined. And that brings us to the end of this how-to for scan sweep filters. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our Tipping Point Technical Assistance Center. And thanks so much for watching.